Good morning, it's Christina here and it is September the 12th and this is a floss tube number seven. I'm going to try to speak up a little bit louder on this one because I've had feedback that I'm a little bit too quiet. Um, so let's see how this goes and hopefully you can all hear me a little bit better. Uh, same format as before because it's not very creative sometimes. Uh, so we'll start with uh, a life update. Still don't have a car, haven't been well enough to drive one. I sprained my ankle seven weeks ago um, and it's been playing up quite a lot, uh, which has meant that driving would have been quite painful. I'm waiting on a referral to physio. Don't think it's probably going to help a huge amount because I tore the ligaments in the ankle many years ago and I think I've probably retorn some of them, but we'll see. Um, and this may be a short video because uh, my back has gone into spasm and I'm not actually sure how long I can sit in this chair. Uh, I've taken something to relax the muscles but it's still hurting and it's also giving me sciatica. So that's great fun. That's what I get for trying housework. Either makes my hands come out in a rash or I break another part of my body. I should just give up on cleaning. Giving up on cleaning sounds like a really good plan today. So I'm done for the day and I have a stack of stitching planned for later but more on that after I've shown you what I did this week. Um, first up is a, a golden oldie and it is a golden oldie because I finished it in 2015. It is, um, and excuse my pronunciation, Randia Power Week which was done by a Dutch shop and Dutch designer as a freebie on their blog um, and the charts were available for just that year and then after that you can buy them in a book form and they're actually from uh, Dutch marking samplers that were done by Dutch schoolgirls that they have in their personal collection uh, so we start with um, there's a little title page and this one I did in very non-traditional colours because the traditional colours are red and blue. Uh, the one from 2014 I did in red and blue uh, and I have put that put away somewhere because I've actually finished it into a book format. This one I haven't finished. It's stitched on a 28 count linen band in a natural with a simple edge which I believe came from Valpo and Heilenbeck. Um, which is a German company that specialise in linen banding mostly, but they also do other linen fabric. And as you can see, there are lots of bands and borders in this. Uh, so I will just move through them slowly. They started quite simple and as it went down, they got slightly more complex and some of them required two colours. Um, I basically worked with um, I think it was about six threads and, and rotated them in a kind of pattern. So you wouldn't necessarily get the same blue and the same green or the same purple and the same green next to each other. Um, so I made it a little bit random. So hopefully that made it slightly more interesting. As you can see, this is a, a very long piece. There was one or two, maybe three of the smaller bands a week. Um, and so it was very easy to keep up with the stitch along and uh, yeah, lots of ideas should I ever need to uh, design a border in my own work at some point in the future. So it's getting there, but <laughs> that's again there. I think it's about halfway now. So I hope you've got quite patient. Oh, look, there's a complex one. See. And my video decided to stop recording for some unknown reasons, so I'm going to have to um, edit this together. That's going to be a joy. And keep going through this. 
see. It's very pretty. And uh, yeah. Keep going. <laughs> and there's more. And more. So this was a year long uh, a year long project. There was 52 weeks of it. And finally you get to the end and there's some super quirky ones at the end. So there's some men and there's some elephants, which are really cool, rather cute. So if I stand up and hold it up, you will see that it's massive. So that's a quarter of it. Normally I just keep it rolled up and at some point I will finish it into a book like the other one but it was quite a fiddly finish so it will take some time. Stitching this week works in progress. I actually worked on seven projects this week a different one every day of the week so I'm going to go through them and I actually got them in the order I worked on them for a change I haven't ironed them this week though because I couldn't stand at the ironing board so sorry you're gonna to have to get them all crumpled hopefully they're not too bad because most of them were ironed last week uh, for, so we'll start off with my oldest work in progress which is uh, Companions by Teresa Winsler and you've seen this one quite a few times now and this one is now about 65% complete and I finally reached the far edge but not with the trees I actually reached the far edge with the snow at the bottom <laughs> so yeah so we're getting there I can potentially see this one being finished this year. I don't know about you. What do you think? Do you think I can finish it this year? Yeah. Well, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. So that's of, um, a Teresa Wensler. So typical of her designs. A million and one blends and lots of backstitch. So let's give you a, a close up of part of it so you can see possibly the, the Father Frost bit because he's finished and backstitched. So you can see lots and lots of fractionals, uh, lots of blended colours and lots of backstitch, but he looks fabulous when he's completed. He really, he, I mean, he looked very weird without all the backstitching, uh, but yeah. I mean, even the trees, they're, they're blends of greens, they're not a green. Each one of these greens is two shades of green to use together. Again, a ton of fractionals and the backstitch makes it. But then that gives curves to the snow, so it's really worth it, I think. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's looking good and I, I'm really enjoying it. So that's my first project this week. Um, and next I got out uh, Sublime Stitches again, which I have showed you last week. Uh, this one is still on my Whipgo board to get it to 25% complete. Uh, so I have actually got it to 24% complete now. So very close to meeting my whip go goal. Here's, here's the whole width of what I've done so far. And if I fold it a bit. You can see what I did this week. So I finished the fly stitch here and then I did the detached fly stitch there and then I did this wheat sheaf stitch which is very similar to fly stitch it's in the same family and then I did this black work motif which is actually a motif that you can repeat endlessly um, to cover a large area and I wouldn't because I made so so many counting mistakes on this that my buddy frog frog came out so many times and I was so pleased when I finally did it. And I thought, I can't stitch any more on this. I'm done. So it's it's a really pretty motif. It's done in uh, DMC and in the Incrinet in a matching colour. So I don't know, see if you can see some of the sparkle on it. Hopefully you can. Um, 
absolutely beautiful but a real pain to count that one absolute pain so i'm looking forward to picking this one up soon and meeting my whip go goal just by finishing the little bits at the bottom of this third section hopefully that should do it so that's great and uh, the next one i worked on was victoria quaker also on my whip go board the goal of which is to get this one to 25 percent complete and clearly i was tired as i put this one away i didn't even finish the thread and i don't usually do that i usually at least finish the thread i'm working on so this one is stitched on a 32 count Belfast in an antique ivory using Carrie's Creations threads. It's designed by Anne Monami Pierre and this is a uh, light raspberry and this is navy and the bits I did is I finished this motif bit here. I did a little bit of the lady that sat here, these two letters, that letter A and the start of this Quaker motif here. So hopefully we'll be on our way. This one is now 11% complete. So yay, serious progress. Definitely gonna be able to make the whip go goal. This one hasn't been called yet. So hopefully it's another one I'll get done before it's even called. And then I picked up Stargazer Lily, which was my August whip go goal which I didn't meet because I was supposed to get it to 10% and uh, I didn't but it's now at 4% complete and I made some progress so let me just hold that up so you can see the progress I made so there's um, quite a lot more done on this leaf that's part of the top petal sorry that's part of the top flower um, yeah hopefully that one I should be able to get to 10% in the next few weeks so a month's late but I'll get there I'll keep pulling it out until I get there and this one is by the silver lining um, which I believe is no longer producing charts so it'll only be available on the second hand market it's quite beautiful it's so many pinks in it and it's a mix of anchor and DMC threads to get a better colour range. I'm stitching it over to with uh, two threads on a 36 count even weave from Sew It All called Summer's Day. So that one will probably come out next week. Probably. We'll see what the will that I spin brings up. And then the sixth project I worked on is another one I know you've seen very recently and that's um, Recipe for a Magical Night by Alessandra Adelaide because this one has been called this month on WIPGO and the goal of that one is to finish it and as you can see I'm getting reasonably close this one's actually 79% complete so may, may if I push it have a finish next week if not the week after um, so that's that's great. I did over a thousand stitches on it this week, filling in bits here and there. So you'll see there's uh, quite a few bits that have been added in and really, really pleased with how this one's coming along. So, particularly most of this bottom bit is now complete. There's a, a tiny bit there I have to fill in. Um, and then it's from that, that point upwards there's there's bits that are missing so that's good hopefully I'll be able to move it up in the queue snap and finish that top corner soon um, this one is on 28 count white Monaco using DMC threads as called for and the DMC satins in the neon green and neon yellow and it has the prospect of being finished for Halloween this year so we'll see if I can make that into a wall hanging or find a frame that will fit and frame it myself. That would be good. And finally, last night I worked on um, my second, second oldest whip, which is the Linen and Threads Mystery from 2017. Now this one is on 38 count uh, red linen from Graziano and it's an absolutely stunning red. It's not quite as pink as it shows if I bring it in close this is closer to the actual colour it's a proper scarlet colour and I was working on the June band and I did 
a couple of bees and then I finished finished the border of it to the end so the June band is very nearly finished um, this one uh, the goal for Whipgo which hasn't been called yet is to get it to 76% it's currently on 54% there's a huge amount of stitches to be done on it um, maybe another 9,000 to get it to the goal so I'm I'm going to be pushing my luck to get this one finished this year but I'm going to try see if I can meet that whip go goal and that's all of the stitching I did this week which is actually quite a lot and I'm quite pleased that um, I'm getting there on the whip go thing because it's actually getting me to, to finish or really make some progress on some of my older whips because those are the ones that I put on my board with the intention of finishing them, excuse me. Too much talking today. I don't usually talk this much, do I? So, haul, none, none whatsoever. But I did order something, it's just not here yet. I've put an order in for the Just Cross Stitch um, Christmas Ornament Magazine from Sparkly, so hopefully that will come at some point in the next few weeks. Uh, looking forward to that. I've already seen the digital copy, but I just prefer to have the hard copy. I'm funny like that. <laughs> um, floss tuber of the week would be Basic Stitches and Little Stitch Girl, uh, which is um, a daughter who's a designer and her mother who does a lot of her model stitching and occasionally her aunt and her grandmother who pop in so there's four of them good fun she does beautiful designs they're on etsy i'll put a link below um yeah really i like the designs i haven't bought any yet but i keep looking at them and i think i might have to um hit that buy button soon they're also available in uh, needle workshops in uh, printed version as well. I'm not sure any of the UK shops carry the printed ones. So I think I'll probably just get the digital ones on Etsy. I quite like her Gingham series. So um, shop of the week would be one I haven't used for a while, but have used in the past. And that's Peakside Needle Crafts. It's another UK shop that brings in stuff from the United States and other places so it's good to um be able to get hold of a few things that i can't normally get hold of um yeah good service as well never had a problem with them excellent and finally lipstick of the week is from sleek and it's a true color matte lipstick in exaggerate which is quite a cute purple but I thought it would go with the dress I'm wearing today, which is one of my favourite vintage numbers. It's, um, I think it's probably late 80s, maybe early 90s from Marks and Spencer's Per Una range. Beautifully soft, cottony kind of dress, really comfy to wear. And uh, yeah, no buttons, no zips, just goes on over the top. So no hassle when I'm having a bad day like today with pain. And I can still look at least slightly put together because <laughs> I don't feel it today. Um, oh, and I forgot something because I'm, um, my brain's not with it. I'm going to blame it on the fact I had to take diazepam for the muscle spasm I was in. I reached 100 subscribers. Now, I had no idea that 100 people would want to keep coming back and watch I talk about because... It's just my stitching mostly. Um, and occasionally I go to a couple of local charity shops when I can drive. And before, a while back, I found a kit in the charity shop for a very good price. I still got the price on it, but it wasn't my style, but I thought I'd buy it. And then I'd do a giveaway at some point. So here's the kit. It is complete. I've, I've opened it and checked. As you can see, I paid a, an enormous two pounds for this kit. So in fact, I can uh, show you. It's uh, Ada fabric. 
and two thread cards. I think it's two. Yep, two thread cards. So complete kit. Then the chart. Have a sneak peek or so it looks like at some point it was opened by someone and they to check it and they just didn't do it. Just use the rattling while I put it all away. So I don't tend to stitch on Ada anyway. It's a little bit too cute for my tastes. So I thought there might be someone out there that would want it um, and would enjoy the fact that I found an absolute bargain. I do occasionally have some things in there that I think, oh, not my style at all. But So this is the Mallow Fairy from, um, that's it, what's the name of the artist? Cecily Mary Barker, um, and it's a DMC kit. Sorry about the glare. She's, she's cute. Anyway, I will post this anywhere, absolutely anywhere in the world. I've done a giveaway previously in different places and I had to send to, to China and to all sorts of places and it's been fine. I've had no problems. There may be a slight delay in me getting to the post office because I don't have a car at the moment unless I can persuade someone else to post it. But we'll worry about that in a week. <laughs> I might have a car in a week. You never know. Um, so what I would like you to say in a comment is the word fairy. F-A-I-R-Y. If you'd like to win this Mallow Fairy kit. Um, it's on six, 16 count Ada, if that's a concern for any of you, because I know some people don't like anything other than 14 count. Um, yeah, so let me know if that's what you'd want and I will do a random draw next week to pick a winner and go from there. And I hope somebody, whoever wins it, really enjoys it. And then they can come back and share a picture with me. But show them what they've done. And if I find any other fabulous bargains there, I might well do some more of these giveaways. So obviously I'll, uh, I'll reseal it and I will put it in a, in a bag so it stays dry and clean in the post. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully someone will enjoy that far more than the person that ended up with it in the charity shop. And that's, oh, plans, plans. Nope, don't have any. Not sure what I'm even doing today, stitching wise. Haven't spun my wheel yet. As I'm recording this on my phone, I can't. Uh, but I'm going to try and concentrate on the Whipco projects. The one that I didn't do last week, last month, which is Stargazer Lily. And the two that were called this month, which were, ooh, Magical Night, and what was the other one? Paris by Night. Did I even show that one? Dang, I think I forgot one. I will be back. I forgot a whip. And I'm back with my usual chaotic and disorganised self with the one that I forgot, which was Paris by night based on an Aframoff painting and I did about 300 more stitches in black uh, down on this side just this bit here basically and that one is now all five percent complete but it's on my Whipgo board for September to get it to 25 percent it's going to need about 13 and a half thousand stitches to get it to that it's looking pretty unlikely, but I will just carry it on over until October, November or December if needed to get it to that goal. And I think by the end of the year, I'll get there. I think I might need cheering on when I get a bit fed up with this one. 
because 14,000 stitches on one project is a lot. <sighs> anyway, that's it. Muddled, confused, disorganised as normal. I'm going to blame it on being in pain and tired. And now I'm going to go and rest with my heated blanket and some stitching and edit this, add in some pictures of where things were previously and upload it to YouTube. So I will see you next week. Goodbye.